lot of better setting in college football. Of course, I'm biased, but on a beautiful yeah. day like this, it shows itself awfully well. Let's see what Kansas defense can do against Rodney Stewart. A short but extremely quick, powerful little back. And yeah. of course, Cody Hawk. 5'6", 175. And a flag is thrown. Colorado may have too many actors out there. Yep. Yeah, illegal participation. So that's an organizational problem that the coordinator's got to do a better job to right. get the personnel grouping in there. Let's go down to Nate. They had, what, 12 guys? Yeah, the tight end, Ryan Dehan, came out there and wasn't supposed to be out there, so that's 12 men on the field. So it'll be first and 15 at the 15 for Colorado to start the game, and they're going to run a sweep to the left side with the ball. Richardson, the freshman running back, and our freshman wide receiver, I should say, and he is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. They send the running back in motion and a screen pass over here to the running back, Stewart, and he's pulled down near the 15-yard line by middle linebacker Justin Springer and in good field position. Back to throw, Cody Hawkins. And he throws, and he unloads it to Stewart, who's going to run for a first down on the far sidelines, up across the 35, knocked out of bounds at the 37. Oh, huge play for Colorado. Three wide outs to the near side, one on the far side. Hawkins with time, slings it up the field, and it is caught by Scotty McKnight, the three-year starter. Chris Harris got him, but McKnight in KU territory. Boy, this is... Uh, Emerge now is a pretty good drive. Here's a running play to Rodney Stewart, and Stewart wiggling his way inside the 40 to about the 39, taken down by Steven Johnson. Now they've got a fullback in there as they line up in the eye. Hawkins gives to Stewart again, straight ahead a couple of yards to about the 38. Again, Steven Johnson, David, who is coming into play today, KU's leading tackler on the year. And he's got the football. He retreats to throw and does. And it's caught, but Short. not quite enough for a first down. It was caught by Richardson. Double tight end. They go to Stewart, running left. And he's got the first down as he got to the edge. Pulled down to about the 29 by Greg Brown. There is a penalty flag. No. Yeah, I think it may have been around the horse collar or late on the sideline over there. Called against Greg Brown, the corner position on the uh, boundary side, actually the field side, Greg Brown. And that's just going to make that fourth down conversion more painful. Defense number five. Threatening. Hawkins under center, now leaning out to the right. Oh, the ball's on the Back to Stewart, and he'll have to cover it back at the 26-yard line. And I think that was designed, Bob. But I think uh, Cody Hawkins came out there and was doing some kind of a crazy signal like he was signaling his wide receivers. And, and the running back, Rodney Stewart, should have expected that, but it still bounced off his hands. Wow, that trickery. I'm not sure that was necessary, but that's a minus 10. Let's go to Nate. That's exactly what it was. Hawkins started walking toward the right sideline, talking to his wide receiver, acting like he was audible, and they were supposed to direct snap it to Stewart, but he wasn't ready for it. Yeah, I don't see that there was a need to do that. Everything was kind of going their way. So it's second down and 22 at the 27-yard line. Hawkins back to throw, unloads, and it's dropped over the middle. He was trying to get it to one of his wide receivers. Third and 22 at the KU 27. Looking over the middle, he throws. It's caught by Stewart. Down to the 10 and down to the 7. Not quite a first down. But I'll tell you, another close. close call. Jake Laptad was right there. Under center, Cody Hawkins. On fourth down, he gives to Stewart. Cutting left into the end zone. Untouched. Touchdown. Yeah, and he just broke the ankles of Lubbock Smith. Put a move on Lubbock, who was blitzing, a run blitz. Uh, really exactly where he'd want Lubbock Smith to be. But uh, the young, excuse me, Rodney Stewart, the 5'6", 175-pound running back, just did the quickest cut on our strong safety, Lubbock Smith, and left him on the turf, and Rodney Stewart goes into the end zone. All right, Goodman is the place kicker. He's 15 for 15 on extra points this year. Hawkins, the holder, the kick is up, and it is good, and what a drive to get this ball game. Hey, you need some points. They send the tight end in motion to the right. Hand off given to Sims and not much there. Maybe a yard. Third and long again. Mike Spencer is going to go to tackle. So you got 
one new player, but three different position moves. So it really kind of throws things out of context. He come back, steps up, throws, caught for a first down. McDougal inside the 10, down close to the six. First and goal, Kansas. Well, I, you know, credit the offensive line and Riley. Hawks need a touchdown to tie it. Hand off, Sims inside the five, down close to the one. Second and goal, Jayhawks. Several occasions. And it's a handoff to Quigley, and stretching to the end zone, he can't quite get in. Yeah, you got to be careful. He tried to put that ball out there with one okay. hand. Seven to nothing, Colorado. Three tight ends of the fullback. And we have a movement. Oh, I think our right guard. My gosh. Yeah, our right guard moves, so that's going to take third and less than a yard back to third and six instead of one. Rolling out to the right, Meekum throws, in zone, broken up. They were trying to go to Patterson. He had a man right on him, Ray Polk. To try to get KU on the board from the 23-yard 23, uh, 23 attempt. Ball placed down. The field goal attempt is up, and it's good. We've got John Williams and Darius Parrish in. Uh, they're right. getting some fresh bodies at defensive tackle. So they can get a little push in there against Hawkins, the quarterback, who slings it out in the flat. Caught, taken across the 17, uh, 15 yard line, and I beg your pardon, the 25 yard line. Tony Clemens. In Colorado back to throw. It's dropped at the 34 by Clemens, who saw a little slam pattern there, and he just had to reach behind him ever so slightly. Third and three, Colorado. Richardson and Oporum. There's a pass in the flat. Make the tackle, Clemens, Anthony. And he's tackled. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis there to take him down, and Colorado will have to punt. Now the team got worn down in the second half last week. They wanted to rotate more bodies in. Here's the kick. It's, oh, they're going to run into the kicker. Well, I, I thought they got part of it. It's a rugby-style punt, but the official obviously judged they did not. It would not have thrown a flag. I thought Kansas was offsides. I, I, there was... Either m movement well, by the offense or the defense offsides on this, and it's going to be a personal foul against Kansas on the punt. Wow. The best K you could hope for was a, is a redo. But these may be both against Kansas. Offsides. Defense, oh, boy. Penalties declined. Running into uh, the kicker. Defense, number 33. Five-yard penalty result to play. First down. Colorado with new life at their own 33 with a first down leading 7-3. Handoff given to Stewart, bouncing to the outside, and he's pushed out of bounds. Buffs at their own 36, leading 7-3. Pass play complete out in the flat over there. Uh, the tackle made almost immediately on Tony Clemens. They've been good on third and fourth down here. Hawkins back, steps up, fires long, got a man open, caught at the 30, 20, 10. Richardson. Touchdown, the freshman Paul Richardson. Yeah, there's just too much time for Cody Hawkins and too much speed from a guy that we knew was athletic. He's going to be a future player in the league, probably. I mean, this guy can fly. He showed it right there, but too much time allowed Richardson to run this deep post pattern over the middle where he beats Kansas free safety Chris Harris. And just like that, what could have been KU's ball bit close to midfield ends up being a second Colorado touchdown because Kansas was offsides on the punt rush. Unbelievable. Fourth touchdown pass of the year for Hawkins. Here's the extra point try by Goodman. Up and right through there. Going to the end zone, caught, touchdown. Richardson got it, his second TD of the game. Yeah, and they've had some stops out there, but it was that key offsides on a punt that uh, gave Colorado the opportunity to score one touchdown, and then the conversion of a couple of fourth downs for the first touchdown. Pistol formation. Hawkins turns, gives the ball to his running back, Stewart, who gets to the outside, but knocked out of bounds by Chris Harris near the 34, so it's a gain of about five on... Here is Hawkins looking to the right. Now he throws, and it's caught a first down at the 43-yard line. Nice catch by Rick Richardson, leading 14 to three. Pass to the far side is caught over there by Clemens, and Clemens hauled out of bounds near midfield. Running back Stewart to his right. Hawkins back pedals, slings it out here in the left flat, where it is caught and taken for a first down. Another first down for the Buffs. And off Stewart, straight ahead, 40, cuts wide left, makes his way to the 35 and down to the 32 of the first down. Hawkins under center this time. And off Stewart, bouncing to the outside, to the right, down to the 25. 
One back set. Hawkins under center. Throws out in the right flat. It'll be a first down for Clemens. He's out of bounds near the 20. Rubel's got him that time, but not before he got the first down. Here's a handoff to Stewart running left down to the 15 and down close to the 11 where Rubel's makes an ankle tackle. But Colorado now another relentless drive. Down. Under center, Hawkins. He looks, he turns, he throws to Clemens, and Clemens inside the 10 to the 8. Close to a first down. Hawkins gives to Stewart. Stewart to the five, down to the three. Second and goal. All right, oh, they're up 14 to three, the Bucks. Here's Hawkins backing up, throwing to the end zone. Caught, touchdown. Richardson got it, his second TD of the game. Wow, that was a dangerous pass. It was thrown right over Justin Springer. If Justin was able to get his head turned quicker, I think he could have got a hand up and pulled that down. But, you know, uh, Kansas not getting any breaks, but then again, in the Big 12 Conference, you got to make your own breaks. We'll know that, you know, the injuries may be a little more significant because uh, I think surely it would be time for a quarterback change if they were capable of going, both Webb and Pick. Hawkins hands an inside handoff to Stewart, who breaks into the secondary, clear down to the 35-yard line. Of and Cody Hawkins turns right and gives the ball on a delay. It is... The running back, Stewart, who bolts for another first down. Chris Harris, the safety man, the only guy there to get him, and he's KU for Colorado. Looking right, throwing over in the flat. It's a piece into Paul Richardson, but they've got him corralled over there this time. KU 23. Here's a running play to Stewart. Why not? He breaks into the secondary, down inside the 10. He stumbles. Prince Candy got just enough to trip him up. He's the lone running back. Hawkins turns, gives to Stewart. Straight ahead, inside the five, down to about the one-yard line. Guy that weighs 275. Yep, they go to Stewart, and he's down to the goal line. Touchdown. 27-3, Buffaloes. Now that defense has been out on the field now a little bit longer. Colorado leads in time of possession in the Big 12. They lead couple of interesting uh, stats in the Big 12. Colorado, of course, winless, but leads in time of possession and third downs. And they lead in this game. And he's back to throw. He's he dumps it off to Bashirs. 15, 10, 5. He gets it in the end zone for a touchdown. Bradley McDougal with a nice block, and he is on the scoreboard with a TD. Drafted off of that 1976 when you look at all the three different uh, classes that were part of that 1976 team. And you're talking about Nolan Cromwell, of course. Here's a running play to Sims. He breaks to the 25, up to the 30, far sidelines to the 40, and out of bounds. Jimmy Smith, the cornerback, got him, but a nice carry there by James Sims. There on the, along the way, now Beacom back, swings it out in the flat over there, and a gain of only a yard or so. Unit when 12 players taken by the NFL. Here's a pass play, a flag comes in, and a caught, might have been roughing the passer. Beery Virtual made foul, the catch. Roughing the passer, defense number 58. 15-yard penalty on Maddox, first down. Well, Quinn has to adjust that power in his arm and pick it up a little bit as he's throwing into this breeze we've been talking about. Yeah, he's thrown two picks here in this period. And Meekum looks, now he's going to run and hit out of bounds at the 35. So it'll be second and seven. Sean Sands is the running back. Blitz. Here comes a little screen pass. And on the sidelines, late hit. Oh, oh hit, hit it very hard. But. Now they go to Sims, running right. Not much of a hole, maybe a yard or two. Accepts the snap, steps back, throws over the middle, and underneath it's caught at about the 20 and taken to the 19 by Sands. There was nothing available farther down the field. So now third and five, and Bashirs is the running back now. All right now, Colorado not blitzing and bringing four. And he's back to throw. He dumps it off to Bashirs. 15, 10, 5. He gets it in the end zone for a touchdown. Bradley McDougal with a nice block, and KU's on the scoreboard with a TD. Yeah, that was good protection provided by the offensive line. Five on four. They won that battle, and they were able to, to hit Bashir's crossing, and it was a nice block uh, by McDougal out there on the perimeter. Kansas has not been able to get some good blocks by wide receivers helping themselves. That time McDougal did, and this is going to end a frustrating half on a positive note for KU. Now, Brandstetter for the extra point. 
Ojas puts it down. The kick is up, and he bangs it through there. So first and 15. Back yep. to throw Hawkins. And he puts it in the air, and it's caught over here in the sidelines. And out of bounds, the big tight end, Dean. Dean, who, boy, he's a load when he gets running up that field. It's him going for it and putting it up in the air. Cody Hawkins back, pumps it to the far side. Turn around. And it'll be caught and then dropped. It's dropped and a flag is in. So it may have interference. Tony Clemens, the receiver over there. Let's I think it's going to be against Colorado. Okay, that, we'll see here in a moment. It was man coverage down there for Kansas. And they had Barfield, but Bar that's interference on the digging up. He's got to turn around in that man coverage. He had the speed to be there. He just has to turn around. There's a pass out in the flat to Dean. Melted. Oh. And now a flag comes in. Isaiah Barfield hit him. Well, and they're going to get Barfield for making some kind of a gesture afterwards. And, you know, I think the pile and I might be called on the referee for doing that to Kansas. I, I, I don't know. He, he kind of made a. He was excited because he made a big hit on the receiver after he catches the ball. But was it over the top? I, in my opinion, it was not. Well, you see that a lot. Let's go down to Nate. What did you see? Personal foul. I'm going to say roughness on the defense. Number 19. That, that was the contact to the head. That was shoulder pad to shoulder pad. Wow. Well, Isaiah had a penalty like that that probably was more warranted a couple of weeks ago when he came up and made a big hit on a wide receiver screen. So it was not yeah. called on the gesture Isaiah made after. I did see a replay now and I did not see helmet to helmet. It was a hard hit. Hawkins throwing to the end zone and it's at the back of the end zone. No good. It'll be second down Colorado at the KU 18 only 16 seconds to play in the half. Hawkins is back looking throwing and it is caught and McKnight at the 15 to the 12 and out of bounds if they feel there's a chance I, th I think they're throwing it up there the flag that is third down Colorado at the KU 12 Hawkins throwing to the end zone touchdown Colorado oh, what a reaction by Colorado in just 45 seconds and they still had two timeouts left in their pocket and I believe that started with 45 seconds on the clock there's still three yeah. seconds Colorado still has two timeouts and it was that fast of course aided by a couple of penalties that went against Kansas and gave him 30 yards. Javon Thornton a freshman tight end got it. Colorado's yeah. got it at their own 46 yard line after all that. And here's a play action fake Hawkins runs out to the right throws and he's got a man who makes the catch. It is uh, his backup tight end Luke Walters. 35 to 10 Colorado Hawkins drops back guns the ball to the end zone and it's incomplete he led his receiver Clements just a little too much for Colorado at the KU 39 second and 10 Hawkins looks to the left now throws to the near sidelines incomplete plenty of contact right there Richardson was the intended receiver third and 10 Colorado pressure coming pass on the way and three Jayhawks going for it and they knock it down boy that was a interception waiting to happen but it turns out to be an incomplete pass and now a flag thrown back at the quarterback personal foul dropping the pass their defense number 97 legal have contact 15 yard penalty automatic first down well it, it, Richard was there in time evidently had the helmet contact that they're going to call every time but Richard had a great rush and getting contact to the quarterback Cody Hawkins would have been the foul the foul was he made some kind of contact to the helmet of uh, Cody Hawkins boy Kansas is being penalized today ouch I'll say over and over again some costly penalties first down at the KU 24 for Colorado after that Hawkins goes under center gives to Stewart Stewart trying to squirt through the line but he's tripped up after a short game this time by the Jayhawks Drew Dudley they've made some plays this year I, you know, I think uh, they match up about as well as they have in the last couple they go to Stewart again on a run and he's down to the 20 and tripped up there by Tyler Patman third and let's call it seven for, for Colorado at the KU 21 Hawkins back pedals throws over the middle broken up good defense by they're going to Scotty McKnight 
There's the ball put down. The kick is on the way. It's got all kinds of distance, and it's good. As Colorado adds three points to their lead. First down, Jayhawks. Their 11th of the ball game. And Meekum giving the ball to Sands, who makes a nice quick cut. Against oh, yeah. Throws for picks. You bet. Here's Sims waiting for an opening and then tries to shoot through it and he gets down to about the 36. They've got a fullback, Steve Foster, into the game. With two tight ends. See if they can get this first down. Sims trying for it. He's got it. First down to the 33. Nice pad level by James. Good blocking uh, up front, but Colorado did support the run very well, but Sims hit him with the pads down and was able to get a couple yards after contact for a Kansas first down. Terrell Smith made the tackle. Now, Sean Sands is in it, running back. First down, KU. They're 13th. KU down here, 38 to 10. The third quarter, play action. Meekum slides out to the right. Wants to throw and does, and it's caught by Jonathan Wilson at the 25. Mark it at the 24, so it's really more like second and two. Running play, Sands, first down, I think. He had to get the 21. Now he swings in motion. Bashirs takes the handoff on a draw play and fighting inside the 20, down to about the 17. This is not able to put pressure on teams. Hand off to Sands. He got inside the 15 to the 14, then really manhandled and pushed back by a couple of Colorado guys. He crosses the field. He goes in motion, handoff, little misdirection to Sands, inside the 10, down to the 7. First and goal, KU. First and goal, Jayhawks at the Colorado 7. Running play, Sims, inside the 5, down close to the 2-yard line. Nice run, good blocking. Well, this, this, Billy made the tackle. Yeah. This is the best pad level I've seen James since maybe the Georgia Tech game. When he was really getting. It. I mean, that time his pad level stayed about three feet high, and everything was going forward. They go to Sims again, banging hard against a couple of buffs. He is stopped just shy of the goal line. Two tight ends, handoff into the end zone, touchdown, James Sims. Good block by Foster. The. Uh, fullback that was in on that just a great pad level by James Sims I keep repeating that and what that means is as you hit that line of scrimmage going full speed but also you know staying about three feet high giving really the defenders nothing to tackle nothing to hit like that and if they do hit him he's gonna fall forward on that put pressure on a, on a big 12 team or you know except for Iowa State in the first half and they have it on Colorado now if they're able to get the ball back and score in a reasonable amount of time they could put a little pressure on Colorado, and then it could be a different game. But you need to stop here, or even better yet, a turnover. That'd be good. Here's a running play to Stewart. Boy breaks to the outside. Look out. 35, 40, up to midfield, and into KU territory. Boy, they, what a game he's having. Greg Brown making the stop. He is really durable. He is their main man at that position. They go to him again, and this time he's hit at the 45. You know he takes a lot of pounding week to week, but... He does most of the tailback work. Lubbock Smith got him there. It'll be for Colorado at the KU 45. And a pass play to the far side is complete over there. And inside the 35 goes Scotty McKnight, the veteran receiver, and he's out of bounds at the 31. Here's a so first down Colorado, KU 31. Play action. It's a screen pass over here. And it's not going to go for much. Richardson hit near the line of scrimmage, if not behind the line of scrimmage, a yard by Isaiah Barfield. Second and 12 after a two-yard loss there for the Buffs. Short drop, Hawkins. Pass play to the sidelines. Caught over here by Richardson. Out of bounds at about the 22. Not Hawkins. Going to run a handoff to the talented running back, Stewart, who's inside the 10 and down to the 8. First and goal, Buffalo. Uh, all right, let's keep these buffs out. You just got to keep competing. That's that's what I think every fan wants to see out here, working hard and competing no matter what the score is. And off Stewart cutting to the right, and they trying to get him hemmed in, but he makes another move and takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado, on a nifty move by Stewart. And he did that to Isaiah Barfield, maybe KU's most athletic defender back there. Isaiah has had a fine game. I was out there in space trying to tackle Rodney Stewart. Easier said than done, my friend. 5'6", 175 pounds, and he is quick, and he's somewhat powerful for a smaller back, and he just did a little hesitation move and fake inside, went outside, and got 
Barfield to stop in his tracks and it took off and left Barfield and got the score. Yet another Colorado extra point is forthcoming. And Goodman's boot is on target. And San, uh, Sands is the running back this time. Beacom looks to throw it after a short drop. It's caught by Wilson for a first down. Up near the 46 yard line of KU. First down, Jayhawks. And they fake a reverse. Meekum avoids pressure. Now trying to run. Oh, he took a hard hit right near the line of scrimmage. At their own 47. San, uh, Sims is in now. When Meekum's in trouble. Now he takes the ball and runs and inside the midfield stripe and down close to the Colorado 45. He made a pretty good run out of that if he goes in motion. And they run a delay to Bashir is trying to get outside. 45, first down on the sideline. Oh, it's right there. Got hit out of bounds, and here comes a flag on Colorado. That was pretty obvious. Yes, and that, you know, that's going to turn a nice run by DJ, who completely changed his directions and got to the perimeter. And Kansas is not uh, well latent with uh, speed foul. out there. DJ would be one of, of the guys. Terrell Defense Smith with the late hit over there on the sideline and a block on the play, David, by the quarterback, uh, Quinn Meekum. Yeah, he tried to get his head in there and throw it down there. And uh, but DJ, you know, making some things happen, getting the perimeter, inviting, you know, that that hit as he gets to the sideline and makes it a big play. First down. So Kansas won't win with trading touchdowns, but it'll be a little more exciting for the fans here. And a handoff to James Sims. Uh, I know these guys and know their recruiting record. It's outstanding. Here's a screen pass over here oh, to Patterson. Nice. He made a nice move to get inside the 15 out of the 14. He made a man miss, and then Sanderfield eventually got him. And what a move he made out there in space on the wide receiver screen. Third and a yard at the Colorado 14. Handoff Sims. He needs a yard. Let's see if he's got it. Yeah, much more than that. Want to keep these chains moving here. I think we'll Briga. have a fourth down. Here. Two tight ends, but a shotgun. And a handoff. And Sims, boy, he didn't need much. Way about a foot. And I'm surely he had it. He got pushed back. Well, he got at least two feet. So they got a first and goal at the three. Hand off to Sims again. Busting down to the five. Working. Whoa. Stretching out. Touchdown. Wow. Great finish running right over Terrell Smith. Good job by the offensive line getting him to the second level. But it was James Sims and his pad level that just pummels Terrell Smith and pushes it into the end zone for another Kansas score. I love the pad level of this young freshman, particularly how he's running today. Grandstander's next run up, and it's short. It's Onside. an outsider, and it is fought for. Let's see who got it. Officials come in here. Kansas ball. Hey, you got it. That was a nice kick by Brandstetter. It just topped that ball enough. I love the aggressive call by Turner Gill. Look where Dan Hawkins is. He's clear out on they the field. They got to get him off the field. He's, he's out there with, where the football is. Now they're taking him off the field. The ball has to travel 10 yards. The ruling on the field is confirmed by go. video. Recovered by Kansas. First uh, down. Reasonable questions about an offensive interference penalty. There's a handoff to uh, Shears, who's fighting for yardage. There's just none to be found. And Meekham, shotgun, short drop, throws out in the flat. Caught over there by John Wilson, but not much yardage. A couple of yards to about the 44. Third and seven. Meekham is back to try to throw for it. Does. Has a man. Caught it for a first down. John Wilson. And down to the 40 he goes. Good play on third down to Wilson. The old, old veteran out there, the senior. Yeah, moving soon to move into that eighth spot all time for KU receptions. And Jaleel Brown really playing off John Wilson. He was able to just post off on him. About an eight-yard hitch and then took it up into the field and was able to get some extra yards. First down and actually the 38. Colorado jumping there. Pass play underway. Wilson caught it at the 10 and down to the pylon. Touchdown! Got it. That should be a free play for Kansas offsides Colorado. And Mika very heady on that. Knows that he had the free play. Decided to throw it up to John Wilson. Make it a jump ball. And the senior went up and got it. Pulled it down. 
throw the play is touchdown. And got it into the end zone. Great job starting with the decision to go for the onside kick, the execution by Brandstetter, and then the aggressive play and the heads up play by Meekum to get that touchdown knowing that he had that free play. Now it's 45 to 30. How, How about, about that? Here's the point after. And you can count that. These Jayhawks have come out and fighting these Buffaloes back to back to back scores this second half. Colorado's led by as many as 28. They go to Stewart. Oh, yeah. And he's hit. Very little gain of hitting. Chris Harris got him. Chris Harris coming up from free safety. A play call by Torbus brought him up to the line of scrimmage. And uh, oh, nice call by Torpus getting Harris up there on the line of scrimmage, expecting to see this Rodney Stewart bounce it outside. It's so that's what you need. Loss of two yards, second and 12. 8.55 to go, 45-31 Colorado. That's the fifth PFL for Chris Harris this year. Se second down play for the Buffs. Hawkins under center. Long count. He's got it. He withdraws to throw. And he does throw it. And it's almost intercepted. Tapman almost. He knocked it down. Had he caught it, he might have scored. I was up here during the break chanting that we need this pick six and this place will erupt and Patman came within a half step. Actually, he had enough break on the ball to make it, but you know, he's not a receiver. He's a defensive back. Great break. Didn't have the greatest hands right there, but you love the effort and the fans that have hung out and stayed around here are excited that this Kansas team's not only competing, but they got a chance here. Third and 12 Colorado at their own 20. Got to stop them on this play. Get a rush. Hawkins Hawkins. back. Pressure, pass play, caught, and a first down for Colorado, Paul Richardson. What a catch by that freshman. Eight minutes to play in the game. Here's a handoff to Stewart, cutting right, and hit hard at the 39. Gain of about four. Second and five, Colorado. There's Hawkins, and a reverse. Going to be blown up. The ball down. The ball, the ball came out. There's a sideline flag thrown by the field judge. Perhaps Kansas got on the field. But I think it's going to go down as a touchdown for Kansas. The Jayhawks get a fumble for a score. And with an extra point, will trail just seven points. Dead ball. Play game. Sideline interference. Kansas. Five-yard penalty on the point after. Blue on the field touchdown. Wow. We've got us a ball game with 7-12 to go. It's 45-37, Colorado. They've led by as many as 28. Well, these Jayhawks have come out and competed this second half. Was a touchdown after a fumble. The previous play is under further review. Oh. They're going to look to see if he was down before the ball came out straight up the field. The ruling on the field stands. All right. <laughs> Hawkins back in the gun, throws it out in a flat over there, and it's going to be tackled at the 22. Richardson, short game as Justin Springer got there to put a big bear hug on him. Hawkins fakes a handoff to Stewart. He rolls out to the right, and he throws it. Intercepted! He's got it! Tyler Patman out of bounds near the 35. Horrible pass by Cody Hawkins to the sideline. Scotty McKnight did a sideline route. Patman just stepped in front. just a quarter ago then he almost had another pick the guy's getting great breaks on the ball just a red shirt freshman having an outstanding game and now a short field for Kansas his momentum took him out of bounds now they mark him out of bounds at the 37 so that's where KU will start McKnight was the intended receiver 629 to play in the game KU with an empty backfield Five receivers. The time really not a factor. One time out, but 629 remaining. Now flags are thrown. Somebody moved too early. Dog got it. Well. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. First down now, KU. First and 15. Meekum's going to throw it. And Patterson. One-handed catch at the 20. And he's out of bounds. What a sensational play. Down to Nate Butini. That five yards in front of me, guys, right at the 20-yard line. It was thrown by. Him and just reach back with one hand and pull 
pulled it in and then spun away from the tackle. Guy's not only one hand, it was his left hand, and he just took it out there and stabbed it with one hand, his left hand, as Nate suggested. And th these guys are playing on emotion and playing at an extra level right now. This isn't the same team we saw first half. Hand off to Sims. Not much room, but he bangs down close to the 17, maybe the 16. Double tight end, two wide outs, far side. Hand off to Sims. Inside the 15 to the 14, not enough for the first down. It'll be third down. From the shotgun, Meekum. Hand off Sims. Down to the 10. Got it to the 5. First and goal. Ray Polk got him, and what a determined run by James Sims. And what a great blocking up front by South Capra, Tanner Hawkins, and a Jeremiah Hatz. It really just opened up that left side and got James Sims to that second level. And again, the way Sims is running with that kind of momentum that he's able to generate from his speed and the pad level so low, he's able to get that extra two yards after the contact. So now it's first and goal. Let's call it the six yard line, actually. Okay, you down seven after trailing by 28. Go to Sims again, cutting to the outside. Touchdown! Ted McNulty sealed off the left side. James Sims tried off tackle, but then just went laterally outside and was able to benefit from a great block by McNulty. And just like that, the team that was down by 28 is an extra point away from tying it up with 430 remaining. Wow. Aren't you glad you stayed? Well, I tell you what, what, what a great second half. And there were so many things you could look back on. Kansas not playing well, but had all those bad breaks, some questionable calls, and they fought back. Here's the extra point, and it ties the ball game. 4.30 to go, 45 to 45. Fighting on adrenaline right now. And off to Stewart. Head for about three and wrapped up by Justin Springer. And here, guys, be aggressive. Get a stop. Hawkins in the shotgun, back to throw, and he throws it away. Incomplete on the sideline. Well, he floated it up there so much, Lubbock Smith just about got under it. Third and seven. How many people can just bring? They bring five. Richardson in motion, Hawkins back. A shake, and he's hit. Down he goes. Ball's out. Is the ball out? Colorado's got it. Colorado's got it. They're wrestling a big lineman down. But it'll be fourth down Buffalo. Not only that, but it's a sack for Jake Laptat, who came from the left side and planted one right on Cody Hawkins for his third sack of the season. Jake beat the right tackle. The big right tackle, I think, ended up with the ball by uh, Tiari. And now KU will receive a punt and back for the Jayhawks, Bashirs and Patterson. 3-13 to play in regulation. And one of my keys to the game, that Kansas has to create four bad plays, counting sacks and turnovers. They have that now with that sack and three turnovers. They'll get the ball back with 3-0-2 remaining. One timeout. And here's the little side saddle kick. Will they field it? No, it takes a KU bounce. Get away from it, guys. At the 37, it's dead. But you have the opportunity yeah. with a timeout and a lot of momentum. So here are the Jayhawks. They run a draw play, and not much there for Sands, maybe a yard. Going through the mind of Chuck Long, just how oh, aggressive yeah. to get with this uh, inexperienced quarterback, Quinn Meekum. Well, he's going to throw it here, and he does. And it's caught. Sands, first down, 50, 45, and out of bounds. He just ran out of room on the boundary. He ran out of room, but not before. He picks up a big first down. Nice block by John Wilson out on the perimeter. Nice, safe conservative throw good play call by Chuck Long Wilson coming across the middle brought a couple defenders with him and it opened the play up for Sims clock Love. is running out and I, th I think you've got plenty of time you've got a timeout in your pocket and really you know you got 14 yards you need to get for the 12 on the play clock first down Kansas at the Colorado 44 Sims is your running back Minute 47, pass play over here to Patterson. Good Patterson, a move to the 40 and down to the 38. They need a little more. Minute 35 to play. How about what adrenaline can do? It, it can make Kansas look so much quicker in this second half. They're getting the plays and a great cutback there by uh, David Patterson. We Their left defensive end, Josh Hardigan, limping off the field. Second and five for KU, a minute 20 to go. And off, Sims, 35, 30, and down to the 28, tackle there. You see who he make miss out there? J Jimmy Smith was not blocked. He's just waiting for, for the running back, uh, James Sims, to get there. And Sims puts a move on uh, all-conference cornerback Jimmy Smith. To
Sims is the running back. They go to Sims. 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! This Kansas team has come out in this second half, and they have taken the game away from the visitors to Colorado Buffaloes in what might be the last meeting between these two teams. And, of course, 52 seconds remain. Colorado does have an opportunity to come back. But just an inside zone handoff right over South Capra, Tanner Hawkinson, and Jeremiah Hatch. It gets Sims right to the next level. The safeties are up on the line of scrimmage. Great play call against that defense. And these Jayhawks, aggressive play, aggressive play calling. I love the onside kick. Glad well, you like that touchdown. Well, it what was field goal, huh? What field goal? Yeah, that's the way. You don't, don't give it that opportunity for a block. Here's the extra point by Brandstetter, and he hits another one. He is down by 28 twice in this game. Don't forget, Hawkins not the strongest arm throwing into a win. A strong win. Go ahead and blow. Hawkins goes under center, backs up to throw it, throws as he's hit, but the pass is complete on the sidelines, and out of bounds, Paul Richardson. Uh, Anthony Davis made the stop, but the clock stops with 40 seconds to play in regulation. 52-45 KU. Tobin Opora, we made that huge play on that end the round that caused the fumble, was breathing right down the yeah. neck Second of Cody Hawkins. Second and four buffs at their own 32 with that clock running here. And he'll run with a snap. Second down, Colorado. Hawkins backs up and throws it to the far side. Incomplete. And a flag comes in late. Interference. Paul Richardson, the target. Well, Anthony's right there. He just needs to get that head turned around. He was in great position, and there was a little bit of contact. But any contact when you don't have your head turned around looking at the ball is going to draw that fair. call. Defense. 30, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Hawkins under center again. Stewart the running back, Hawkins backs up. Pass play, incomplete, over here on the near sideline. It's one down, there's three left. Tell you what, this defensive line, they've got to draw on everything they have and then more. The adrenaline that comes from the frustration of the lopsided losses in conference play to be able to do whatever you can to get in the face, to get a knockdown, to get a sack of Cody Hawkins. Second and 10, Colorado. Cephalo was the intended receiver there. Hawkins backs up again, slides out to the left, throws it out of bounds, far side. Third down coming up. Great coverage out there. You look out, and every Colorado receiver is covered. Tobin will him with more pressure out there, but Greg Brown, Chris Harris, Lovick Smith, Tyler Patman, who's had an outstanding game, and Isaiah Barfield. Credit these guys doing a great job, but better rush means quicker throws by Hawkins. So third down, 26 seconds. The clock stopped. Come on, guys, two more plays. Here's Hawkins backing up, backing up. Now stepping up, throwing incomplete. Throwing underneath that time. Now fourth down. Here's your ball game coming up. Bad throw by Cody Hawkins. The receiver open right over the middle. Kyle Cephalo is the receiver. And it's just thrown behind Cephalo by about two yards. He's so a junior college guy. You know where he's from? He's from Boise. Wow. Well, the guy that's coaching Colorado used to be in Boise. All right, whatever it takes. Fourth down. This is it. 21 seconds to play. Jake Laptad, Richard Johnson, Tobin or Porum. These guys have to get down there. Tyrone Sellers is at a defensive end. This is their fastest nucleus of defensive linemen for a pass rush. Let's see what they can do. Fourth down. Hawkins, a deep drop, rolling out to the right, throwing the football. Caught on the sideline and out of bounds. Or McKnight caught it. Fortunately for Kansas, he lost his balance and went out of bounds, or he might have scored a touchdown. Oh, Tyler Patman was right there. He made the break on the ball. Perhaps should have played more conservative, went for the knockdown instead of the pick. Oh. But Patman went for another pick himself, and it's escaped his grasp. 14 seconds. Hawkins back. Throwing to the far side. And caught. Is it out of bounds? No, it's inbounds at the 7. Eight seconds to play. Richardson caught it just inbounds. Oh, my. I'll tell you what, this is not for a conference championship, but one of the most exciting games in the conference this season. The comeback, Kansas takes the lead. Eight seconds remaining. Kansas up by seven. Down from the seven-yard line. Pass play to the end zone. Caught. It is. Drop. Oh, my. It's dropped. Holy cow. 
seconds to go is dropped on the sideline over there. It was a fade pass, and Richardson got wide open. I don't know how he got that wide open, but he drops an easy catch that would have given Colorado an opportunity to tie this up and take it into overtime. But now, regardless of the down, there's two seconds remaining. Ruling on the field for incomplete pass. Previous plays under further review. Well, what are they reviewing here? Let's get down to Nate. What was your view of it? Okay, guys, I'm standing behind the zone here, and that was on the far side of the end zone. As you guys can see, I'm standing right behind the goalpost. I got a pretty good look at it. He, he brought the ball in with two hands, and it looked like a catch. Then as he landed on the ground, he dropped the football. Yeah. The question is, did he have it long enough for it to be a catch before he dropped it? Of course, we, we've seen some crazy plays in football this year in the end zone on plays. You know, we saw Calvin Johnson, the NFL, catch a pass that looked like he thought he caught it but then he dropped it as he got up to run away and they said that didn't count as a catch I'll be very interested to see if they've got That's enough evidence to overturn it on the field is confirmed oh. incomplete pass they do not thank goodness so be a play it man on the outside which would leave you more people on the inside in case it's a run to Rodney Stewart you got to think you want to double up on the outside not allow just man coverage because it's not only going to be a pass with two seconds remaining at the seven yard line two seconds to go KU is down 45 to 17 in the fourth quarter and came back to win this game unbelievable well we'll spend some time wrapping this baby up this was someday and everybody that came to the game today and maybe some people who didn't come will say they stayed till the end yeah <laughs> i think so i think some people came back in the fourth quarter so. there's more people here wow wow oh, I, i'm just so happy for this coaching staff yeah, you for the seniors you know if, for everyone that's a kansas fan that that has had to question about you know what direction this program is going we got to feel good that these guys believe in turner gill it's what i see out of the practices these guys are playing hard practicing hard we've got a bunch of good assistant coaches that are teaching this game of football and it's all paid off today i this makes up for a multitude of, of past frustrations